I don't know how I could ever wear another helmet again. What's up guys, American Abroad here, and today we are talking about the Arai XD4. It has replaced my EXO Scorpion R1 Air Carbon Edition, and I'm really excited to say that this has become my new favorite helmet. Stick around, let's get after it. All right, what's going on guys? So the XD4, wow, absolutely amazing helmet. Loving this thing. I know we looked at it on the scale just a minute ago and it is a bit heavier, significantly heavier than my carbon helmet, the EXO. But I will say it does feel better on my head. You know, I, I, maybe it's because the shell sizes are more, uh, you know, they have more shell sizes in this lineup. It just feels better on my head. It feels like it's actually on my, you know, I don't know, it feels like it fits my head as opposed to sitting on my head, if that makes sense. So here's my biggest concern about this helmet is the peak. And I think that's probably everybody's concern when you're doing a lot of highway miles like I do. Um, if that's your case, that was a major concern for me. The peak and as well the fact that I didn't have a tinted lens on this, uh, on this helmet. I will say the peak, not a problem. I mean, at some highway speeds or on windier days, yes, I do feel it pulling me a bit more and it does strain my neck a bit. If I was gonna do a lot of highway miles, you know, maybe it would be a little bit rough on me. The nice thing about this helmet is you can actually, it comes with other plates you can put on the sides and actually ride this without the peak if you want. Um, and, it, and it doesn't look half bad without the peak. It, you know, if you're familiar with the XD4, it might look a little bit naked to you, but yeah, I mean, it's possible. If you wanted to ride it without the peak, it is possible. I'm about six foot and I already have, even without this helmet, I do have a little bit of buffeting coming off the GS stock windscreen. So I do feel it slightly on the peak, but the peak's very stable. And normally, especially on back roads like this, it's not an issue. Something I did want to try and that I have tried now is I've closed all the vents. Never had a helmet that had this much ventilation in it. It's absolutely incredible. Love all the ventilation, but it worries me for winter, you know? I want to make sure that in winter, um, my head is warm. I always wear a balaclava anyways in the winter, but you know, it's nice not to have to worry about that too much. So you've got tons of vents here. You've got two here. You've got a vent here and you've got two different options to work this vent. So this vent in the front, there's another opening or another, I don't know, I guess a thing on the inside, a, a open close thing. And basically what you can do is you can have this open and just pushing air up to the visor as opposed to into your face. Or you can open both and have the wind coming into your face. You've got two more vents up here on the lens and to help with fogging. And as well, you've got two vents up top and a couple of circulation vents around the back. So it is pretty nice, you know, you, in the summer, man, this thing is incredible. I've been riding for a couple weeks. We had some really hot days and man, this thing just performed. It gave me so much ventilation. I, I never took my helmet off and was sweaty. I mean, this thing was just great. I'm curious to see how it's gonna go in the winter, but a few months will tell. I know you can get a different, a different chin guard here that kind of increases that, it puts a little flap underneath here so you've got some extra protection from the wind. So back to the tinted lens. On the tinted lens side of things, the Peak provides incredible protection from the sun. I'm riding right into the sun right now and I don't have glasses on. In my other helmet, I would just be getting blared if I didn't have, like I would be getting so much sun, I wouldn't be able to ride honestly. And uh, if I had a clear lens on my other helmet, I was finding I was actually getting sunburnt on my face. So yeah, so I was always switching the lenses in and out and I've had several helmets that had those lenses, those drop down lenses and they would break after a time and then basically while I was riding it would just pop down randomly. You know, I'd hit a bump or something and it popped down and it never popped down all the way. It would pop down just enough to where it was like halfway in my sight line and it was just really screwing with me. So I absolutely was like, never want to do that again. It happened to me on several helmets, I was like, okay, I'm done with these drop down lenses. Some people love them. For me, I was like, screw this, I don't want that. So that's why I'm only going with helmets that don't have drop down lenses and it adds weight to the helmet too. So that was another reason. So yeah, I'm actually able to ride this even without sunglasses right now and it's blocking the sun for me. So it's pretty nice. Um, you can switch, they do have tinted versions of these lenses, but 
you know, it's it, it's not a quick release system at all. You've kind of got to really, uh, you know, take some time to unscrew these side plates and everything if you want to switch the map, switch out the lens. So it's definitely not something I'm going to be doing every day. So I just ride with sunglasses and I actually have really been enjoying um, just riding with sunglasses. It provides me a lot of flexibility. If you are someone that uh, finds yourself a little bit claustrophobic in helmets, I will say maybe try an X-T4 because this helmet is great. You have so much space right here in front of your face and it doesn't feel like the helmet's kind of like right up against your nose or anything. I know on my on my EXO, I do feel like it's kind of right up on my nose. And if I kind of, you know, wiggle my nose a little bit, I got a big nose anyways, but if I wiggle my nose a little bit, I feel, you know, I could, I could, I feel like I could kind of touch the, the end of the helmet. And that one's a medium. This is a small, so, you know, I did find with this helmet, you know, because of the shape and everything, I had to go down to a small, but I love it. I, I love the smaller shell size. This helmet is absolutely incredible, guys. If you haven't tried this out, the, you know, I, I do have all the vents closed. I did try and stand up just now and kind of give a little read on how the helmet is performing. I'll do it again real quick. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting still quite a bit of, of circulation in the helmet which feels great today because it's a little bit of a cooler day, but you know, I've got a t-shirt on underneath my jacket and it feels awesome out. Although if you sit in the sun for a little bit, you do feel it baking. I'm wearing black jeans and I feel it. I really feel comfortable in this thing. I, I know it's heavier, but it just doesn't, just doesn't feel that much heavier, guys. I know what this scale says. I know what logic says. It is heavier helmet. It is a heavier helmet, but <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, maybe I feel it, but it, it, it's an awesome helmet, guys. Like, really, if you are looking for an amazing looking helmet, this thing looks awesome, super aggressive. I went with the white because I love to be uh, noticed on the road because I don't want to get hit. Not because I have a issue with, look at me, <laughs> but I just don't like to get hit I want people to notice me that's why I've got the d4s on the front of the bike because I want people to see me and I run those even during the day and people are always flashing me which is really annoying the other day I was sitting in a parking lot and this lady pulled up in the parking lot it's completely unrelated pulled up in the parking lot and I had just turned on my motorcycle and she starts flashing her lights on me I'm like dude you just pulled up in front of me and now you're flashing me and my d4s are just on like running lights I know they're super bright but come on like I'm sitting still <laughs> So a couple of key features I wanted to talk about, um, you know, this isn't really a comparison because, um, you know, this is a dual sport helmet. This is more of a street helmet. Yeah, the, the style is completely different. I'm keeping this helmet. My wife's gonna use this from now on to ride in. It's still a great helmet, still really enjoy it. And it's still a very light helmet. This helmet actually fits me better than any helmet ever has. A couple of things that I think really make this thing just absolutely incredible. You know, you've got so much ventilation in this helmet. I mean, it is ridiculous. I was so surprised. I've never worn a helmet that gives so much ventilation. I mean, in the summer, which is the main reason I got this, it just, it, it feels like you've got an AC in this thing. I mean, there's so much ventilation. It just allows for so much airflow and you can literally feel it all over your head. Whereas something like the Scorpion, I never really felt like opening or closing the vents ever made a difference. But with the Arai, man, it makes a world of difference. Some people say that the visor is a bit tricky, and it is. When you're on the highway, sometimes you catch some wind a certain way, and it doesn't feel so great. But I will say the visor is very steady. You don't have any wind noise coming from the visor. And with my GS, the wind protection that it provides, I really don't ever experience any issues with buffeting or anything like that. I can feel a little bit of wind catching, but it's not uncomfortable. Might be on a longer trip, but so far I ride my bike every day. This doesn't give me any trouble. So a couple of cool things. Um, I do actually, I'm gonna weigh these things. So let's, let's do that first. Let's get it out of the way. And then we can talk a little bit more about the helmets. All right, so both of these helmets do have comm systems on them. I'm just going to put this on here. 17, 19. So then let's check out the EXO carbon. I mean, I can tell there's a big difference just in 
hanging on to it. And that is 1296. So there's just a significant weight difference there on the two helmets. So a couple of things. I didn't really know if I was gonna like the shield on the front of this because of the way the visor hits. I didn't know if it was gonna be something I really liked. Being that it's curved in such a way, I thought maybe I'd get some weird um, you know, viewpoints through it, but it's actually good. It's actually really great. In this helmet, I never really felt like it was comfortable just with the clear lens during the day. This one is super comfortable. It actually does have a little lock here, so it does lock down. I find it really easy to slip glasses on and off on this helmet, not so much on this helmet. And I will say I've ridden with a lot of motorcycle helmets and the padding inside the Arai is just unbelievable, guys. Like, so unbelievable. This is an incredible helmet built with so much quality. I am literally, I don't know how I could ever wear another helmet again. This helmet has just ruined me. But the padding is so absolutely incredible inside this thing. You know, um, I saw someone do a video, Revzilla did a video actually on the shell, or the component inside the shell. It's like the inner shell, if you will. And the guys that make these actually initial them with their own personal initials because these helmets are handmade part of the way and um, in Japan. And they actually put their own initials because they're so proud of their work. And this thing is a work of art. That's all I can say. You know, it's got the vents up here at the top of the visor. I have no fogging issues whatsoever. Um, you know, even if you do close this front vent, if it's open, it flows air into your face. If it's closed, it still lets air in, but it forces it up to keep it from fogging. You've also got two little slats right in here that you can open and close that open these vents. And uh, ooh, another cool feature, if you guys want, is this little, you can kind of lower that little tab and I guess it gives you an extra little, you know, wind protection, I don't know, uh, you know, if, you, if you're having too much noise or something like that. So that's kind of a cool feature and it just kind of pops down there. I love the space that you have with this extra kind of extended front here, this more motocross style helmet looking thing. Um, it's kind of a cool mix between motocross and a street helmet still slim line but also that edgy style it looks really cool this padding again just so plush and when you take the padding in and out it is just gorgeous i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna take some of this out and put this on a book um but it's so easy to get on and off i've got my comms in here but i did want to show you check this out so if you get this helmet it's so customizable um, there's all these different foam layers in there that you can actually peel away. And I think each one is like five millimeters. There's some that are a little, little bit more and it gives you, you know, you can really tailor this helmet to fit exactly how you want it to fit. I wish all helmets were this freaking easy to put the pads in and out of. Um, you know, you, when, you're, when you're messing with this helmet, I'm gonna show you now that it's out actually. Let me, let me come around here. So as you're actually doing this, um, you know, you can just see how plush this is. Like, you know, of course you can see the wiring from my comm here going in. You have to have a point of entrance. And then there's actually this layer, this kind of little flap of padding here that I'm just tucking this wire into. And it's, it's super easy, super nice, and it completely hides all of my wires. And I love the way the padding is like that. I'm gonna show you the difference in the EXO. I had this wired a little bit differently, but you can see, look, I've had to do it like this because this is all one piece here. It doesn't have any breaks in it like the Arai does. So, you know, you have to either go down into between the, the shell and this, and then it's this weird thing where it feels like I'm pinching these wires because I've got to shove this down on top of it. And it just doesn't, doesn't seem right. Like I hate, I actually now hate helmets with this. After being with the Arai, I'm just like, why? Why do this? It's so hard to put comms into. Now this helmet is not, is more of a sport helmet. It's not, you know, something that's necessarily best for comms. It does have cutouts for comms, but yeah. All right, so the Arai X-D4 is a little bit heavier than the carbon model. I know that a lot of people are looking at the Climb uh, version of this helmet, which it does have a carbon model, which is much lighter, and a lot of people say it's great. I'd, I, you know, just every single time I go online and I see somebody, some forum or some blog talking about the best adventure motorcycle helmet, this one's always at the top of the list, always over and over and over again. And you know what, I kind of love that it's just 
basic. There's not a lot of frills to it. It doesn't, you know, you can get them with all kinds of graphics and everything. Uh, I'm not even talking about graphic graphics. I'm just saying the design just seems so basic. And actually when I'm turning my head on the highway, I feel less drag on this than I do on the EXO. You know, if I turn my head on the EXO, it seems to catch on the wind a little bit more. This thing just cuts right through it. I mean, it is such a custom fit on your head. I actually am normally a medium. This is a medium on the EXO. The Arai, I had to go down to a small. The medium just didn't really fit me in the Arai. It felt like I have like a bubble here uh, and it just didn't fit right. So actually the Arai had to go down a size. So think about that as you are buying. Another cool feature, they have this even on the ones that are black, matte black, whatever. They have this extra little tape here that just cuts down on glare that it's bouncing off. Great feature, you can just really tell that they have thought of everything in this helmet. If, if you are looking and you have the money, and you really wanna get something that's gonna be a helmet for a long time for you guys, it's gonna have that custom feel, it's gonna have like top level padding. I don't know how you could get any better padding in a helmet. This helmet is incredible. If you're looking for the best adventure motorcycle helmet, I've gotta say, I think I've found it. Uh, you can get different shields here. You can get like uh, halfway tinted or all the way tinted. And then some companies even sell this weird little extra visor that just kind of pops down right here. It's kind of like, I guess, a night, day to night transition. So you can pop it up at night. But I don't find the need for that. Glasses fit great inside this thing and you just look bad to the bone on wearing this going down the street. Arai has a great reputation. Um, this thing cost, I think, oh, I, I got this $530 in the US on Revzilla. And uh, originally they wanted more than that, but they did a price match for me and dropped it like a hundred bucks, but now they're on sale. So now I think they're down at 533 anyways. I don't know, that happened right after I sent my thing through. I don't know if they realized, hey, like there are competitors out there are selling them cheaper and they dropped the price or whatever, but they've, they've dropped the price on them. They're 533 now. So if you are looking for the best adventure motor style helmet and you want something that's gonna last you a long time and you know your head's gonna be safe in this thing and you're gonna have great padding, great fit, go ahead and go grab yourself one of the X, uh, XD4s. It is absolutely amazing. Couldn't have asked for more. Go get you one.